Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a magnifying glass case. The chances of you needing this are slim to none. I know, you're probably like, what on earth will I need a magnifying glass for? Well, earlier this summer I started raising monarchs, and to say I'm obsessed is a little bit of an understatement. I actually have one right here. This is Meadow. I found her in a freshly mowed field. She was actually under all the grass and stuck and was having a really hard time flying. I felt so bad for her, so I brought her home and I'm trying to nurse her back to health. She just pooped on me. Let me clean that off. No big deal. I just love them. Like, how could you not love them? How did I get involved in all this? My garden has been certified as a Monarch way station for several years now, but I just always figured they know what they're doing and I never really looked into it more than planting the milkweed and several other flowers that I knew that they would need. I always thought it was really weird that I never actually saw a Monarch caterpillar outside until I was pulling weeds earlier this year. There was some milkweed that had flopped over onto the path and I pulled it. And then I thought, what if there were Monarch eggs on that? I know nothing about their life cycle or anything like that. So I started researching and then I started looking on my milkweed and wouldn't you know, there were eggs. Not just a couple, there were a ton of eggs. Then I found out that about one in a hundred makes it to a full blown adult butterfly. And they're also very close to being put on the endangered species list. I started with about eight eggs and two teeny tiny little caterpillars that I found outside. They are so small, the eggs are smaller than the head on this pin. It was crazy. So then I started getting magnifying glasses so I could see them better, stronger magnifying glasses so I could really see them better, and it turned into a full on obsession. But now I have all this stuff and I wanna keep it safe and all together. I envisioned having this double ended pouch that had everything that I would need in it. That's where this comes in. So I knew I wanted a few things. I knew I wanted it to have pockets on the inside, two zippers because I don't want anything in with this one. And I wanted it to have elastic that would go around it. So that way I can keep a notepad in here. That way I can record when I found the caterpillars and information about them. I also ordered these tags from Monarch Watch and that's why I wanted this pocket so that they could fit right in there. I thought pretty long and hard about this design. I've never tried to make something exactly like this before. I didn't even know if it was possible to make something like this. It turned out exactly how I wanted it, so I figured I'd show you how I made it. I decided to put this video series out this weekend because it is Day of the Dead in Mexico and that coincides with all the migrating monarchs from the East Coast making their way into Mexico. There's a big celebration down there and um, they have incorporated the monarchs into the celebration and it's really beautiful. I'm gonna leave a bunch of video links below so you can check out what I'm talking about if you don't know about it. I can't even tell you how long I just sat and stared and watched these caterpillars. It is probably crazy the amount of time, but they captured my heart, that is for sure. So hopefully they'll capture yours too. Anyway, hopefully you'll learn a little sewing, you'll learn a little about monarchs, and don't forget to subscribe so you can make sure you see all the videos I'm releasing about my summer with the monarchs. Okay, enough rambling. <laughs> Let me show you how to make this. The first thing I did was lay everything out on my cutting mat so I could get a general idea of the size that I wanted the bag to be and where everything would go. This is a great project to use up all those scraps that you may have laying around, but I had specific fabrics that I had in mind that I wanted to use, so I dug all those out. You're also gonna need some fusible fleece for this project. Since I was making my own pattern for this, I took the general size that I wanted and added a few inches for seam allowance and bulk of the items that would be inside. Then I doubled up a piece of fusible fleece because I knew I wanted a double zip pouch. I laid a few of the items on top just to double check and make sure that this was the size that I wanted and that I still had some extra for the seam allowance. I did not want to do all this work and the magnifying glass wouldn't fit. The size I decided on was 17 inches by 11 inches, so I cut two of those out of the fusible fleece. And then I triple checked to make sure it would fit. Then I cut a bunch of different strips of fabric. 
They were all about two inches wide, but I wanted them all to be a little bit different. Take all those strips over to the ironing board and press everything flat. Grab one of the pieces of fusible fleece and put it bumpy side up. Put your strips on top and trim them slightly wider than the fusible fleece. I put the second strip face down because this is how we're going to sew it together later. I decided to cut all of my strips so I could keep them in the order that I wanted to sew them. Just make sure every strip you cut is slightly wider than the padding. Also make sure that the selvage edge is outside that seam allowance too. I stacked everything off to the side making sure to keep it in the order that I wanted to sew it. Then sew a straight stitch, securing those two strips to the padding. Remember, the one on the end was right side up and the second strip was face down. Take it back over to your ironing board and open those strips up. Then press it nice and flat, but make sure you don't get your hot iron on that fusible fleece. Take your third strip and place it face down on top of the second one. And then sew right along that edge. Then back over to the ironing board, open everything up, and press it flat. This technique is called quilt as you go, and it's one of my favorites because the end result is always awesome. You guessed it, grab the fourth strip, lay it face down, and sew along that line. You're just gonna continue doing these steps for the entire length of the bag. Feel free to watch some of my favorite videos of the monarch caterpillars I raised as I sew the rest of these strips together. All these caterpillars did the entire time they were a caterpillar was eat and poop, but they were still pretty fascinating to watch. I also learned that caterpillars are technically larvae, which I always thought that word was designated for gross things only like maggots. Let's never speak of this fact again, shall we? This little guy was squishy face, he was one of my favorites. Not that it's very nice to have favorites, but I did have a few. Also, Hamilton was one of my favorites. Hey, what can I say? He was young, scrappy, and hungry. So by now your project looks like a complete mess, but don't worry, we're gonna trim down all the edges and it will look beautiful. Now trim down your two lining pieces and your other outer panel to size. I didn't quilt my other outer panel because I knew I wanted that pocket and you wouldn't see it anyway. Go ahead and iron your other outer panel to the other piece of fusible fleece. I stacked everything in order to get an idea of how it will look when it's done. the outer panel that's going to have the pocket on it in half to find the center. I wanted the pocket to be split in half, so in order to fit everything that I wanted, I needed that panel to be 7 inches wide, add half an inch for a seam allowance, and then you're going to want to double that measurement so you have a front and a back. I ended up cutting out an 11 by 15 inch rectangle. Fold that in half right sides together, and then lay it on the bag to make sure it's exactly how you want it. Sew along the raw edge across from the fold to create a tube. Flip it right side out and then top stitch along each raw edge. Cut the zippers down so they're about 3 quarters of an inch shorter than where you want to place them. I'm going to put zipper tabs on the end of each zipper. So take a scrap of fabric, fold it in half, and press. Then open that up, fold each edge in towards the center, and press. This strip was about two inches wide, by the way. Fold it back in half, and press again. Then take the end of the zipper and sandwich it in between that fabric. Top stitch it in place.
Trim down the fabric on either side so it's even with the zipper inside. Then sandwich the other end of the zipper inside and do the same thing. Now fold the zippers in half and put a pin to mark the center. Fold one of your outer panels in half and crease it to find the center. Mark that with a pin and then do the same thing for the opposite side. Now take one of your zippers and place it right side down, lining up those two pins. And pin it in place. Take one of your lining panels and lay that face down, sandwiching the zipper inside. Make sure your zipper foot is on your sewing machine and sew a straight stitch along that edge. You'll have to stop and move that zipper pull out of the way. This is probably the trickiest part of sewing a zipper. Flip your lining panel around to the other side and then top stitch along that edge. This holds the lining fabric out of the way so when you're using your zipper it doesn't get caught. Now take your other outer panel and lay it face up, find the center of your zipper again, and match it up with the pin. Lay your other lining piece on top and sew a straight stitch. Once you're done with that, open everything back up and top stitch along the other side of the zipper. Find the center of the other side of the outer panel and match it up with the center of the other zipper. Roll the top two panels out of the way. You'll know you have the right ones because they're connected to the same side of the zipper. And then lay the other lining face down and stitch. I also remembered I wanted to add some elastic bands, so I dug through my fold-over elastic to find some that sort of matched. I folded the bag up to how it would be when it's finished, and wrapped the elastic around to get an estimate of how long the piece would need to be. And then I just cut two pieces the same size. I folded the elastic in half and put it about an inch away from the edge. Make sure you put it between the outer panel and the zipper. Do the same thing for the other side. You can fold the bag in half to make sure that those elastic bands are even. And now stitch it in place. Once again, flip the bag right side out. It's a little trickier this time. Make sure the elastic is out of the way and do another top stitch. I decided to pin the pocket in place because it would be a lot easier now than later. So I folded the outer panel and the pocket in half and matched up the crease. quadruple checking. Yep, looks pretty good. Then just pin that in place so it doesn't shift around. And then pull that outer panel up so it's right sides together. And then lay the final lining piece right sides down as well. Stitch that edge down.
once again you'll have to move that zipper pull out of the way when you get to it. Feel free at this point to get distracted by your rescue monarch or the bug of your choice. At this point you should flip everything right side out again and top stitch down along that final edge, but I completely forgot and don't realize it until much much later and then it was too late. The next part was very confusing to me on how this whole bag would come together, but I ended up finding a video on the Whitney Sews YouTube channel that was very similar to this bag that I was trying to sew. So if you ever watch this, thank you very much Whitney, because I had no idea how to go from here. So basically all you need to do is pin the outer panels right side together and the lining panels right side together, and then sew around the circumference of each side, leaving a gap to flip everything right side out off to one side. I took a short break to feed Meadow some organic honey water that I made up and she seemed to really like it. I was pretty excited because she was starting to perk up and attempting to fly a little bit. I honestly couldn't believe that she was starting to feel better. Anyway, flip everything right side out. And if your pocket's on the wrong side like mine was, you can just flip it around to the other side. Sew the opening close where you just flipped everything right side out. I decided to stitch it by hand because then you can't see the stitches on the inside and I thought Meadow might be more impressed. She didn't really seem that impressed. This is where I realized I forgot to do that top stitch, but I was not going to rip the whole bag apart now. Fold the bag in half to find the center, and mark with a couple of pins. Then stitch right down the line where the pins are. out the corners of the bag with something pointy and you're done. Then just load up your new bag with all your insect watching necessities.
I had no idea how this bag would look when I started making it, but it honestly turned out exactly how I wanted it. Now I have a safe place to store all my fragile magnifying glasses, and I'm pretty sure Meadow approves of it. Hmm, can you see the mark of approval? That didn't stay clean very long. <laughs>